Right, so this is going to be video two of the TRX4 Sport build. So we finished the axles and the transmission. So now we're going to step up to what they call the plastics bag, chassis plastic. So you get the rails, all the chassis plastics. Of course, it does come with the skid. We are not going to use that skid. We are going to use the Bauhaus skid. Um, that they they have as a lower profile and all that stuff like that so we're going to use that of course this has rails uh bumper mounts the brace in the back all the wire management the shock towers and the side rails uh that's all included in this in this part of the kit here um so we're going to do this real quick it's not it shouldn't be that bad because i think most of these all of these screws look like they're all yeah, they all look pretty much the same. So they should roll. We should roll right on through this pretty quickly. Um, nothing to it kind of deal. So we're going to, uh, let's get started. So the front, the first thing it, <clears throat> it tells you to do, right side rail, which is this rail here. Then you get the front bumper cro uh, cross member for the bumper. And then you get the servo mount. And then one, it looks like the right front shock tower, which I think these should be labeled. That's rear, rear, front. So this is the front, and it, it's got it. And of course, you know which one's going to be the the left because the left's where the panhard is. So it's got that on it there. You know that kind of deal, and that's the difference in that one. So they go they go pretty much one way and one way only. So you're gonna to wanna to get, you wanna grab, so there's 10 millimeter length, 12 millimeter length, two of each. That's gonna be your difference in these screws. I told you they were all about the same. They're really not. So the tens are gonna go into the front. The smaller ones are gonna go into the front bumper cross member. Nothing to that really and truly. So the easiest way that I have found to do this is just to try and you know these plastics stick pretty well but if you hold the end like that and just get one screw in it boom you're done that's all it takes oh 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 oh, oh. drop that there all right then you get now you want to get the 12 the reason why they went the 12s cuz they've got you got this as well as part of it so you've got to have a little bit of extra length as far as that goes to how this is going to fit. Uh, let's see, that should be good there. Now a lot of you guys don't have power tools, which is fine. I just prefer them. I would be using my other one, but it's dead and I forgot to plug it up last night before I left out of the shop last night. So that's how that goes. All right, so that part's done there, not too bad. Next, they want you to find the wire clip, which there's a whole bunch of these. They actually are marked. That says rear left, that says rear right. And this one has got all kinds of stuff. That says front left, we need front right. Front right. All right, so this was cool the way they did this here. So, because this is kind of your nut, so to speak. This is what the screw goes into. So you need one three by 12, which is gonna be your longer one. And then you find your right. Well, come on, there we go. I just not want to be, I just not want to cooperate. So find your front left, which I think it's gonna be this one here. Mm. Maybe not. You know what? That's weird. They don't mark this. They mark everything else, but they don't mark that. So I think it's not, I think it's this one. Yeah, because you look at the picture, it's got the antenna mark there. That's it right there. So we know that's where that's at. That goes into there. This is how you wanna you wanna try and make this line up as best as you can, which is hard to do because it wants to move along with the angle of this chassis rail here for sure ooh, ooh, ooh. there it goes all right let's 
So I got that done there. I'll go to the next page. All right, so here's where it'll get interesting. So they, you know, of course they've got it in here to you put your the lower gear cover, which is this piece here, and then the center skid plate, which is that piece there. But we're not going to use those pieces. We are going to use the Bauhaus setup. So the weird thing, I, you know, I've never installed one of these, so I don't really know if I'm going to do it correctly, but we're going to give it a shot because it says use three by 10 and three, two of those and a three by 12, which goes, you want to use a three by 12 in the back where the wire clip goes, one of those wire clip pieces here. Um, so we're going to give this a shot. I don't, mm, we'll, we'll see here in just a second. I know they got other, they, it comes with some bolts, but I don't know what the, which ones of those bolts are for. Uh, of course, I don't. I haven't watched any of those videos, so <laughs> so we'll give this a shot and see if this will work. This should work. I don't see why it wouldn't work. Well, that went right on. So didn't work there so it only looks like it gets okay I see what I did wrong there so this 3x10 here that is for the steering that does not work there in that spot it will go there though so the 3x10 one goes there one goes there that's going to be blank because of the that's going to be where a steering or that's where a link goes um, so of course then we need to find the right rear clip that's right left right rear and that's where this 3 by 12 goes into here it's amazing that it takes such a long screw All right, so we don't need these parts anymore, so we move them over to the side. They're out of the way. So now we're going to do the rear stuff, which is the rear cross member, which we're going to use the Bauhaus cross member uh, because, well, you know, we're going to use it instead of that. We're going to use this. This is so if you decide to run a longer battery with that battery tray, you're good to go. And then, of course, the rear bumper is or the rear bumper cross member as well. Looks like we're going to do a shock tower as well. Let's see, find rear. It just says rear. It does not say right or left. Which I, looks like, you know, you think they would say, you know, which side you're going to be on, but it does, it does not really matter. It's not that big of a deal. Well, that's confusing. So what does that? Oh, the battery tray. Never mind. Ha, ah. ah. ha. All right. So you do the you do the cross member first with three by tens. three by 12 for the shock tower because it's got a little bit more piece and it actually goes into this brace right here one unbolts into the brace the other side will bolt into the battery tray all right so you got that so you need three by tens for the cross member piece here Ooh. 
All right, so you take that, that's done. So you got that, that, that. So the shock tower, it bolt one screw goes into that, and then you've got one that goes to there. Then you'll, it looks like you're going to take the left chassis rail along with the pan hard mount. You're going to bolt, or not bolt it up, but we're going to set it on here. Most of this stuff, it should just snap, not snap, but just, you know, sit, it should sit right in it kind of deal, most of it. Some of it needs a little bit of tweaking, but most of it will fit and work the first time you do it kind of deal. Not really because it's metal and it's going to do what it wants to do, but so you want two 3 by 10s two 3 by 12s and you're going to use the pant, the one with the pan hard on it, because that's the one that's going to go here. Uh, so you'll take your two 10s first and do it to the, the bumper bracket first. there and you'll take your 12 one of your 12s anyway and it'll do the same way you did on the other side uh, you'll go into ooh, almost lost that one you go into the shock mount and it will bolt into the steering servo mount which is where that is right there um, and that's it for that part there which of course you've got more to it than that as well you know you still got to do all this here um, and you still got to do the other floor along with the wire clips and things like that so we'll do that real fast so it looks like a three by ten goes in there and there yeah okay i see what they want you to do so you do that you'll do a 10 there let's grab a 10 and a 10. i would say probably on that bauhaus do not use full force to tighten it up you know it's 3d printed parts that kind of deal you kind of don't need to do full blast hitting with that because you could wind up tearing up some other stuff that you don't need to tear up then you'll be out of a mount all right so you'll take the you get through two three by twelves which looks like we've got two left three left total and you'll find the front or the right left left maybe that's that's rear left why would they do the rear left? That doesn't make any sense. It goes here. Well, they do left rear. That's more. That's more towards how people talk. <laughs> uh, us in the car industry, left rear is the proper way, not rear left kind of deal. That's kind of not the way to do it there. So there's that. Clean off all your plastic stuff if you want to. We'll go to the next page. There's not much left to do here. Got the rear mount, um, or the rear, excuse me, the rear uh, rails. The last three by 12 is the one that holds the shock tower in, um, of course. Then you use three by, there's three three by tens left, and one goes, which it should be four, but there's not, so not a big deal. One goes here. One goes into the next part here in the tower. Then the other two, it's supposed to be two, there's only one. I'll find another one to put in this battery, this rear cross member. Because I'm always having those. So, all right, so there's that. No big deal there. Uh, the next step, of course, is the uh, electronics bag, which is going to be where the motor plate goes and all the stuff like that. I don't know what motor he's going to run yet, so we're not going to do that right at this moment. 
I'm going to take it out of the bag. Of course, there's our Bauhaus tray. Okay, so got everything. So we are probably you do reuse this motor plate here because it will fit on here, uh, the Bauhaus tray, or the Bauhaus mount or skid. Uh, it does now. This is going to have a couple of things in it we're not going to use because you know the battery tray, so you don't have to build that. Oh, one other thing I noticed that this comes with a metal servo horn. Um, I did not know that, so that's cool. That's good of Traxxas to do that. So we're going to practically pretty much skip this section here to do the motor into the chassis because I don't know what motor he's going to wind up using. He's got a couple of systems that he may wind up doing something with anyway. All right, so the next thing I want you to do is put the uh, the receiver box in, which of course is just this part here. And it has you know two hole two screw holes in it right there, and it will bolt to the uh, you know on, of course on the passenger side. It's going to you always want to go towards the back. Uh, I I you know I move mine in the the front to the front when I built my sport. Uh, of course, it does not line it does line up pretty well as far as that goes. Um, I'm going to flip his that way because I feel that's the better way to do it. Um, Got to find some 3 by 6s here that don't have thread locker on them. Use these two here. Uh, he may not like the idea that I flip it, but he's generally okay with my decisions on things. So we're going to do that because I feel it gives you a little more room with your servo when you're putting things together. Um, you don't have to worry about... Uh, the biggest the biggest problem is is getting certain servos and the wire is not long enough to make it from here to here so when it's on the other side so if you flip it around you got a little bit more room to make it kind of deal so um we do not have serve we do not have a servo so we're going to take the servo bolts here and just put them in the holes uh because that's the best way to keep up with them uh, I just and I, you know what's so weird is they did. I don't know why Traxxas did that. They went to a two and a half millimeter. That's a two and a half millimeter. It's, it's kind of weird. I don't really see the need in that. But you know, I you know, you know whatever. I, they they have their decision. I'm assuming it's probably because that bolt is used in some other kind of truck or car or vehicle, and it's just easier that way than them trying to design another another screw that's you know one more thing they have to have kind of deal and that's probably what it is more than anything else so and of course this all this this part of the electronics is all depending on what you want uh, like they've got right here that you're putting the Traxxas ESC in it you're not gonna most of you guys are probably not gonna do that if you do you're wasting your time in my opinion you shouldn't be doing that anyway and again that's my opinion so, you know, I can, you know, I say that not trying to be rude or mean or anything like that, but there's some of the stuff you can try and get done with, like this receiver box. There's a, <clears throat> a piece of foam that goes right here that try and keeps that, it keeps this thing as waterproof as you can. Um, of course, it does, the kit does come with some zip ties to, to do some zip tying for the wire management whenever you do that. Uh, really nothing else on that we can do. Um, I can do this rest of the receiver box here. Uh, I don't really know if, if it's needed as because I don't know what he's going to do as far as that goes. Uh, I do know what receiver he's probably going to use. He's got a, he's got a, uh, I think he's got a, I don't know what he's got. <laughs> I don't really know what he's got. Um, so we're going to, we'll just throw this on there. So it's three by eights, which I had some of those in my hands a minute ago. So we'll just throw these down on here real quick, not all the way, just enough to where he can take them apart and put his own stuff in there when, he, when he's ready. Uh, take this part, this part here is a two and a half by eight. Uh, you know. On those because that's going to be different. There it is. There it is. And they kept these two millimeter, which is good as well. It makes that a little bit easier to deal with. Uh, 
All right, and then of course it wants you to put the battery tray in. Um, now, you know, you don't have to do any of this stuff here because you're not gonna use that. You're gonna put the Bauhaus tray in it, as, you know, so you don't really need any of those stuff. Now, this is probably the toughest part of the whole thing because you've got to kind of shove this thing in here, you know, and that kind of, that's not really fun as far as that goes. Um, they act like it's not that big of a deal as far as doing this, but it's it's not it's not as simple as you. Which this plastic one luckily is a little bit easier to deal with, um, and see you'll still be able to swing it out of the way whenever you go to put your transmission in. Uh, but just grab two three by twelves. Um, oh, another thing, Traxxas does this. They put a millimeter uh, a ruler on the bottom of each page, which is really cool. I thought that was really neat. They did that. Uh, not nobody nobody does that I don't think so or they do but they do it at the end of the book not at every page so you have a way to do that all right so we got that done there don't have to worry about that piece there motor plates uh, servo horn all right and you check everything it's all built and ready to go so next is gonna be shocks um, of course, this is everybody's always everybody's nemesis, you know, to build any of this kind of stuff. Shocks are always a people's pain. Um, but I, you know what, I think on these it's not going to be that bad uh, because of the fact that they're pre built, so you don't have to worry about the o rings, you don't have to worry about any of the which we're not going to use any of the springs. Uh, we are going to have to use the bolts, I think. Um, to do whatever we're going to do there. We are going to use this particular shock hole that's in the bag. All right, so we're back doing shocks. <clears throat> I went ahead and got my mod done on these. Um, and he went, he said he wanted all soft springs. So this is the new spring that we use for our kits. This is Deluxe. They have a all black spring. Um, which a lot of people said they wanted so I listened and tried to find somebody that had them so I got it done and of course now we use instead of 3d printed parts we use a uh, this is deluxe's Delrin lower cup and I mod it to fit the TRX um, lower shock you know rod end uh, because it's a seven millimeter versus the older ones are six millimeter so I'm only going to do one shock to show you how these go together. Now, I, they, I will say Traxxas does their shock building a little bit differently than I'm used to as far as how I used to build all my shocks. Uh, they want you to, now granted, this is probably the way most people do it, to be honest with you, but they want you to put the oil in it, get, of course, you know, get all your air bubbles out of it, but then compress it all the way, tighten the cap, and then you're done. That's, I've never had, to, I've never done it like that. I, it's just kind of strange to me. Doesn't mean it's wrong. Doesn't mean I'm wrong. You know, everybody has their own way of doing it. So, and that's kind of how I've felt about it. I, I've been, so it comes with a little funnel that goes into the cap like that. And then you just tighten that down there. Of course, you want to make sure that that goes in there like it's supposed to because it's there we go it's got actually has a little o-ring on it as well so it'll keep it from probably spilling out now you do have to cut off the end which i'm not worried about i've got scissors for that and that's it but you probably want to get more out of it somehow some way yeah let's cut this here we'll have a big old it does come with a cap, which is cool as well. It looks like it's already spilling everywhere as it is. So what we'll do is we'll fill it up. <clears throat> now, of course, the inside, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you that. See, the inside has threads in it. I would say you put fluid right to the bottom of those threads uh, because whenever you put this cap down, it goes all the way down in there and it makes it not, it doesn't work properly. Let's put it that way. I always go right to the threads and you'll pump it up, pull it back down, get all the air bubbles out of it. 
go slow. I always go slow a couple times and twist it to try and see if I can move some air around. Then I go fast a couple times to try and get it to move. You know, they put shockle, silicone shockle, but they didn't tell you what what's weight it is, which is weird. All right, so then you do that there a couple times. You take the cap, start tightening it down, not all the way. Push this up to see if anything comes out. So you want to you want to hold that there while you tighten this down. Some fluid will come out, of course. You know that's kind of going to be normal. That's okay. You tighten it down. Boom. And there you go. So you've got a functioning shock. Take your a paper towel and you know clean off that right there. All right. So then, for my kit, you'll take your spring, put it on here. Of course, you want to pull that out, the the shock shaft out. Uh, and you want to put a, you want to put my, the lower cup on, which is where that is there. So that holds that. So then you can take shock pliers, hold it, and then you can put on the rod end that you had just removed when you've done all this. Go just until it stops, because it stops. It's pretty good. And then you kind of got to put a little bit of pressure on that, but then you go, there you go. You've got a fully functioning comp shock. That's pretty good. All right, so I'm not going to show you how to build the rest of them. I'm going to build them real quick. Uh, and then I'll be back. And then we'll uh, finish up. We're doing links next. I'm assuming. <clears throat> and then we'll probably put everything on the truck, on the chassis. So I'll be All right, we're back. So, got everything done. Everything is built. Everything's ready. I made a couple of mistakes here and there. Uh, with the Bauhaus uh, skid, you have to use different size screws for certain things. Mainly the one that goes um, for the lower link right here. Uh, if you use one that's too long, it touches the drive shaft and it will not allow the drive shaft to move. Um, so, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's built. I will say this is probably the easiest kit I've ever built. Um, Traxxas just keeps on doing good things. I, I mean, I've built a couple of kits. The BRX01 is pretty easy to go together, but it's all aluminum, so you got to kind of watch that side of things. Um, other than that, though, the, the BRX01 is great to build as well. It's a very satisfying build, the way everything snaps together. But as far as... Um, non-special kits this is probably the easiest kit i've built um as you can see you get all the low with with my shock mod kit on there uh you can set it down super low uh you your limitation is probably gonna, it's the pan hard bar uh right in there um of course we got some extra stuff you know here as far as this goes there's a couple little things they want you to put bumpers and wheels and tires and stuff on I'm not going to do any of that because I don't know what he wants to do, uh, and I'll let him take care of the body stuff as well. But so I, I wanted to go over all that stuff with you now. I mean, this thing is all color. So when you go to put the body on, it's going to show you everything in color. I mean, it's it's hard to beat. That's pretty tough, and I, I like that blue. That blue's kind of nice thing. Um, it's tough. It's a tough kit, man. It's hard to beat. Um, as far as building stuff goes, and of course we added the Bauhaus 
battery tray in the bow house skid on it so it takes away a little bit of the, the hump at the bottom there. Um, I say um a lot, don't I? So I got done with that. So I hope everybody has a happy Labor Day. And we'll see you next time with the next build. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. I'll answer everybody. See you later.